Have you ever wondered about the true origins of Christmas? Let's journey back in time to the end of the third century, when a Greek Roman king converted to a new faith. This was a critical turning point, marking the conversion of what was then referred to as a pagan, a term I'm not fond of but it's essential for our narrative. A pagan is someone who does not subscribe to the doctrines of Judaism, Christianity, Islam or communism. These religions interestingly all originate from the same desert region, roughly within a 500 km radius. It's a common misapprehension that Christianity sprouted from Europe. However, that's a mere illusion. The techniques used for conversion and the propagation of these religions do stem from Europe. But the roots of Christianity lie elsewhere. So, the seeds of Christmas were sown in a desert region, far from the snowy landscapes we associate it with today. Long before Christmas as we know it, there was the Winter Feast, a celebration steeped in the rich tapestry of paganism. The Winter Feast predates Christianity and the festive season we now associate with the end of the year. This tradition was all about survival, endurance and community, deeply intertwined with the rhythms of nature and the cycles of the seasons. Now take a moment to picture the evergreen tree. This tree, a symbol of enduring strength and resilience against the harsh winter, was a potent emblem during the winter feast. Its perennial greenery, even amidst the biting cold and snow, was a beacon of hope, a promise of the spring to come. It stood as a testament to the belief of the pagans in the enduring power of nature, the sun god and the cyclical renewal of life. The winter feast was also marked by a practice that may seem alien to us today, animal sacrifices. This wasn't a gratuitous act, but a profound expression of gratitude and hope. The sacrificed animal, usually a hardy winter creature, represented the community's collective wish for health and fortitude through the winter. The meat wasn't hoarded or wasted, but shared among all, family, farmers and the less fortunate. This practice fostered a sense of unity, kinship and mutual respect, reinforcing the community spirit that was at the heart of pagan belief. It's important to understand that these practices weren't just rituals. They were expressions of a worldview that saw humans as part of a larger, interconnected web of life. A worldview that valued sharing over hoarding, community over individualism, and nature's cycles over man-made constructs. So when we look at the winter feast and the evergreen tree, we see more than just precursors to our modern Christmas celebrations. We see a testament to a time when people lived in harmony with nature, when survival was a communal effort, and when the rhythms of the seasons guided the rhythms of human life. The spirit of community and resilience, symbolized by the winter feast and the evergreen tree, are in the very DNA of every pagan. These symbols and traditions remind us of our shared human history, of our connection to nature, and of values that are worth remembering and reviving. The contrast between pagan and Christian beliefs can be striking. Let's consider an anecdote that illuminates this. Picture a farm near Offenburg where I once found myself. Apple trees dotted the landscape, their bountiful gifts hanging within arm's reach. As a pagan, I see nature's offerings as a shared inheritance, free for the taking. So I picked a few apples, intending to share them with my neighbors. But to my surprise, this was seen as stealing. A crime in the eyes of Christians who view nature's bounties as personal property, owned by those who tend the land. Similarly, consider the act of animal sacrifice. To pagans, it's a tradition, a means of expressing gratitude for nature's generosity. The meat is shared, fostering community spirit. But in Christian societies, this is perceived as backward while systematic slaughter for industry is accepted, even lauded. While pagans see nature as a common heritage, the Christian view leans towards ownership and personal belonging. So how did we get from pagan winter feasts to Christmas? In the course of history, the conversion of a Greek Roman king marked the beginning of a transformation. This transition involved the shift from honoring nature and traditional customs to embracing the beliefs of Christianity. The Winter Feast, a central element of pagan tradition, gradually evolved into what we now celebrate as Christmas. The evergreen tree, a symbol of life and strength during harsh winters, found its way into this festivity as the Christmas tree, a centerpiece of today's holiday decor. These pagan roots intermingled with Christian beliefs, creating a unique blend of customs. However, it's crucial to remember the contrast between pagan and Christian perspectives on nature and ownership. 
Christmas as we know it today is a tapestry woven with threads from many cultures and beliefs, making it a truly global celebration.